the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I know you will do something in my life that has never been done before. Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasa balaka bosh. Zipa kumbria stabala dabako rata kresti bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let your word come tonight to set me free, to deliver me, to prosper me, to enlighten me, that I will rule in the day and rule in the night, that I will be a true ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have everyone around this night. Good evening. Just walk up to 10 people. Give them a big hug. Tell them it's good to have you around. Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand it's the revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? Nina Kawo Yabo. Nina Kawo Yabo. Sirkin Salama. Kene Sirkin Salama. Sirkin Salama. Kene Sirkin Salama. Sirkin Salama. Nina Kawo Yabo.
salama Thank you salama Tonight Lord we declare that you are the king of peace the prince of peace You have come to bless us tonight Let your word bless us In the name of Jesus Hallelujah God bless you please be seated Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title Commanding Results. I didn't write it. I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight if you will believe. Hmm. Make champions out of this message my father. You see many of you when you hear the word like this you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No. No. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate what title. And I said Lord you have to help me. And while I slept the night i just saw it call it commanding results hallelujah what makes certain people to move in levels of results levels of power the manifestations of the word of god what makes certain ministries prosper and increase what makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life. And receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. have seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word the ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight Lord as we explore this ancient book I pray that the potency of your power 
be made manifest in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it. We will respect it. We will obey it. And Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Say in the name of Jesus. The word of God is making me a sign and a wonder. Like the ancients of old, the generals of old, the mighty men of old, I am making history by the power of the word. I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. start reading from verse 18 Matthew 21 if you're there say amen. amen now in the morning as he returned to the city he was hungry say he was hungry so the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger hallelujah and when he saw a fig tree along the way he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves say after me but leaves hmm. only and said to it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away the bible says jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry hallelujah so every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree are you listening to me and the Bible says that Jesus saw a tree from afar. It looked wonderful, green. And Jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Only leaves and no fruit. And he was angry. It didn't look like he loved that tree. Because he cursed the tree out of anger. He said, let no fruit come out of you again. Why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming? And you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. I am sure that Jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree. That tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green hallelujah and every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger and the bible says when jesus came close he thought the leaves were in the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves no fruit what kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size have i mean uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit and Jesus cursed it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no fruit. That can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight. Oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see. Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8. He says, Herein is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. 
not that you become green hallelujah not that you just become green and blossom but you bear fruit hallelujah because when the hungry come they are looking the bible says jesus was hungry if you were not hungry nothing will make him to look for a tree because he was passing and he was hungry and then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves and he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit say i will bear fruit much fruit in the name of jesus hallelujah and so why are certain lives like this you find out that there is no fruit whatsoever listen to me if you have been serving the lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit something is wrong the end of faith is a performance and a manifestation but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed he said being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work he is able to perform it to the end so the life of a christian eventually in your journey some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted psalms 1 Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted. By the rivers as a result he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither but the bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit hallelujah the bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar because they may not see the river that he's planted close to so how will they see he will yield his fruit in season yes we agree that okay it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of god and believe it and absorb it but eventually there should be a sign the bible says and elijah prayed and he told his servant go and check he went he said there is no sign and he prayed at the seventh time there was a sign there will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing whether you are commanding power and authority if it is the real tongues you have been praying for years something in your life there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress are you listening to me if the bible says the word of god is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom are you listening to me the bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the lord if you have been walking and living by the word truly a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence say after me evidence there must be an evidence noah told men that god told him that rain was coming true or false it took a long time but eventually the bible says that god vindicated him abraham was a man who trusted god and even when he was 75 years hallelujah a promise was made to him and he waited 25 years for that promise but eventually the end of faith is a performance if you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of god eventually there must be a performance every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever are you listening to me if one area of your life is receiving results it's a sign that the other area will come so god will encourage you 
If academically you are not doing well, spiritually you are not doing well, health-wise you are not doing well, suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the Spirit is at work in you, what does it tell you? It means fruit is already being produced. Is that correct? And it will motivate you to begin to trust His word in other areas. But where every of your life is a dead, a barren wilderness, something is wrong. Are you listening to me? There are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever. They pray more than anybody else. They fast more than anybody else. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of devotionals circulating in town. But I want to ask you a question tonight. How long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree? When will that leaf begin to translate into fruit? That the hungry can come and begin to eat. Because, you see, it is deceit. Jesus saw a tree and was attracted. And when he came to the tree, he just found leaves. And there was no fruit. And he was angry. And he cursed the tree. He said, may fruit never come out of you again. Hallelujah. Two secrets tonight. Number one. You want to command results in your life. Number one, you must have absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Absolute faith. Don't just write faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in the word of God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Unwavering obedience. Hmm. Absolute faith. That you believe that God is faithful and that God is able. The thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible. God cannot be joking with you. Hallelujah. Absolute faith. Listen, we have ended up complicating Christianity. But do you know, I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by, Verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works. Say greater works. And greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes. And Smith Wigglesworth found this and said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, if I can believe, if I can believe, and God said, yes. Catherine Kuman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes. Not he that is born again. Not he that is praying in tongues. He that believes. Absolute trust. The works that I do. The works that I do. He shall also do. He said, and greater works greater works 
Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for are you listening to me there are some people standing and praying oh lord bring a boat and then we see others get on that water and begin to move the fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing it kills the excuse that is god that is responsible are you listening to me? He that believes in me. The works. I remember one of the first times I read this scripture. I was studying Pastor Chris's message. And Kenyon on faith. We were going to prepare for crusade. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said, Lord, this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who it didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying, God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your unbelief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors. There are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you there are many of you from the time you got to final year. Your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there. Because perfect love casts out fear. So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham and the generals of old, these guys believed God and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith. You came to ABU and you believed God that you'll be a success. Then your first result, 1.5 seven carryovers hey, hey god you said this boy you just said lord i believe you you just said lord i believe you you just said no matter what lord your word is true 
and I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that he's going to be blessing you. Suddenly, your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly, fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quotes. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah i tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and i understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears and we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith, but it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith, they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark, that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room. What, what kind of result will a man command like this? There are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves. Read the Bible. The, see, the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1, 2, 3. Go and read it. The Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum there multitudes heard about him and they came jesus went to the desert the same multitudes came jesus went by the seaside the same multitudes came jesus climbed the mountain the same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he taught the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ, 
the real Jesus. And he stood here. And Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said, I am giving you 10 minutes. The first 10 people who come to me, whatever their needs are, it will be met. How many of you will check your withon before coming? Why are you not doing that to me? Simple. I, you, you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place. Are you listening to me? If you are hungry for God, you have to get the truth and press to it. I assure you, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If Jesus Christ walked here right now, before you finish, the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say, Jesus, you don't know how I've waited. I already have my list. I'm not about to write. And you just drop it. Every time people heard about Jesus, they started laughing. You know why? They knew the result had come. They just started laughing. Their own issue was to get to see him. But your issue is not to see me. Your issue is, at, is to ascertain. Lord, now that I've seen Joshua, help him. Let there be grace that is available this night. To at least be able to meet some of my needs. I tell you, you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say i wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service two have been answered in my mind i say okay seven minus two is what help me seven minus two is what if you drop your prayer point directly to the person christ how many will be met tell me how many will be met this is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing. I refuse to give excuses. It simply means there is a light that I have not seen. There is a depth of anointing I have not stepped into. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I have not gotten to yet. That's why whether you say Apostle Josh, Bishop Josh, I won't be misled with all of those nonsense. There is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Those of you who are already confident. I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible. That's why. Pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride. And find out that there is work to be done. I tell you, if ministers knew this, the Bible would be the best tool that they will have. I refuse to give excuses. Are you listening to me? That my life will make such a mark. See, we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional, people say, this guy is not real. Oh, be careful. This Joshua Selman guy is not real. I'm warning you now. Tomorrow, don't say it's any kind of thing. Because people are so complacent. The average pastor, there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry. One, to have a crowd. Two, to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three. And then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say you think I'm playing. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? That's not uncommon enough. We are talking about commanding authority over territories. One miracle that, let me tell you something. In the days of the generals, all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did. Right now, when last, the man must pay for advert. If you see advert in the newspaper, he paid for it. To say, okay, my program is around, please just check. Are you listening to me? There are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Hmm. Look at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. I say, one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the G started spreading. Elijah, 
who is he they said go and look for him now and the king says because the king's ego is, is spoiled he's embarrassed he says go and catch that man 50 people march and stand and elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship this was a man like you are you listening to me old covenant for you new creation old covenant elijah looks and says if i be a man of god let fire come down right now we have different ways of speaking when you stand you say if i be standing in the authority and moving in the office the department and the office of the christ let it come fire doesn't come you're not getting it we're just teaching congregations english and vocabulary we're just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church well right now there's improvement everybody is falling everywhere everybody is falling everywhere just watch tv a man of signs and wonders before they say anything people just fall and that's all you have to show the world something is wrong that's all you have to show the world that a man just fell down and then all now prophecy itself is even him come you are, you are glad this you are from the east your mother is sick your uncle traveled you are an ABU student and then the congregation claps what, what how look real prophets this is what they say there is coming a problem in zaria but i stop it that's a real mandate that you stand and tell the people what satan wants to do and you stop it the creative power of the spoken word we just have a group of revelatory people even the native doctors can create they have helped to give you the one to reveal when are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results listen if two dead people how many if two dead people rise in koinonia i assure you if you come by 2 30 next friday you will stand outside critics look at the bible the bible says people came and filled where jesus was sitting mark chapter 2 and the bible says others were standing outside when jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought the bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front they said why are you forgiving his sins if they came late they would have been outside even them they rushed and came early for that meeting jesus had no nonsense he climbed the mountain brothers and sisters human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing go to the house of politicians you will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside you say why is he i'm waiting for his excellency that's the, it's called hunger the man has fruit where he got it is irrelevant he shall has fruit when believers come to church and after one hour it's not true i tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire in the days of Amphi McPherson listen she had a program called stretcher only meaning if you are not sick you are not invited for that meeting what is our the name the kind of conferences we have right now business special for only the ones that are successful only you are not successful you are not a businessman walk outside the people are already successful pastor don't lie it's not your anointing that is making them successful these guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of five million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete it and buy his car if i can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car I'm a real prophet. Don't go and meet somebody that's already tried. If I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jim, tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. 
am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter. And she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and searched for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind, I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Hallelujah. The king got to hear gist about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked. He signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting for? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. Says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church, a Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Auntie McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter. They walk close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind there are wheelchairs. And just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and will just jump the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets. Because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we have half of that anointing, I will put this thing will be a basket, a bowl, and then you put it, you write my name, Joshua, and then my picture will be here. You come and touch it, lick it, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, bath with the pour water on it and go and bath. Madness. All those things because we do not understand. Women shook their generations. Right now, there are men of God who are on TV but nobody knows them. They air three times a week. As they are saying now, we thank you for this broadcast. You cannot even remember who preached again. The only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a print.
printing press. Noise. Leaves with no fruit. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you? Because we need to rise. Friends, this is an apostolic generation. You cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing. What we are doing now is joke. I tell you it's not ministry yet. Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He was driving. Okay, they were driving him. An armed robber stopped them. Park, park, stop. The driver was afraid. Idahosa just opened his mouth. He told the person to open the door for him first. He came out. The armed robber, lie down, lie down. He just looked at them. He said, one of three things must happen to you this night. Either you will be paralyzed, you will be blind, or you will die. But one must happen this night. Will land brothers ever? Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, he said, go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was a yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing. I came all the way 50 kilometers to tell you. Your... While they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before when men were around there was fire you know these demons have been around since they knew the fire upon this man and they ask one another they say, ah, when these guys died they didn't transfer anything <laughs> and all of those men they were called brother this brother that now you call Joshua Selman apostle you know I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul Apostle Smith Wigglesworth Apostle John G. Lake Apostle St. Patrick Apostle Josh for where? for where? you won't deceive me no way but many of you are already parading sons and daughters he said, call me pastor this. Go and sit down. Go and sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do. Say in the name of Jesus, I believe. And yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says so that they without us that means our generation is still coming. The Bible says this. Do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died? I'll share with you some stories today. Before Smith Wigglesworth died, when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for. Apostle Babalola, he was said, listen, it was said that that guy was so powerful a time came when he was preaching and he started lifting literally see the water that the concept of holy water came from him he was thirsty praying on a mountain and there was no water and he struck the rock and said let water come man they are the type you say men to not 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 the, the, the people who are saying men we are, we are called you call us children Am I challenging you? Do you know Apostle Babalola was moving? There was a council. Now, this one I attended a pastor's conference by Apostle A.T.B. Williams in Kafanchan. 
Emmanuel Kure's conference and he, and he was saying this he said that Apostle Babalola when they wanted to call him when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of God there were certain elders like seven or eight of them they said they don't believe he's called look at the miracles that this man was doing they said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing in other words this guy is still a joker he's playing ministry all of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation the elders refused they say until God speaks to every one of them one by one before they were agreed one day they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle Babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said but you are not mad now he collected his matches he said sit down here please that was how those men confirmed that god really called this guy now how do we confirm that god has called a man once you just see a guy that is handsome he looks like Eliab you just say surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of Christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of God say I'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch I'm so fulfilled there are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and Jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything I'm doing and you have been deceiving many like that let me tell you there are many people that God himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor because if we keep deceiving God's people and claiming come for miracle service are the people really receiving miracles or do we just celebrate one miracle a fractured hand got healed when i was watching what the media people played i tell you i i was happy but i was angry at the same time or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired they just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it that's the real me now people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens he said drink it prophetic water you drink it you 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 they say take come and buy a special i saw a man of god praying for one woman the anointing oil is like this 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 uh, uh so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle he poured some on her head told her to pour some Hi. what men of god do to people and ask her to drink everything that's how she drank in my presence it was on, on tv drank everything the man said yes if you drink oil like that you will be sick you will be very sick we spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person look at Jesus I will be made clean come on he saw the demons go and they left what is wrong? Am I? Is the only me that is having this anger? Many of you are saying, "I won't be a man of God." Please turn and face these people. Say, "I believe the word of God." The second key: your faith can be seen, friends. The second key. I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews So open your eyes 
open your ears and then you'll understand that the Lord is here open your eyes open your ears and then you'll understand that the Lord is here Hebrews 7 verse 7 let me show you this is one of the biggest secrets of my life I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight I tell you if you believe this if you believe this you will be changed forever behold I show you a mystery Lord open our eyes respect what you are about to hear <laughs> verse 1 for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and what blessed him number two to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace three without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of God abided a priest continually verse 6 but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises verse 7 read with me together one to go and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better read it one more time and without all contradiction the less is blessed stand up please stand up just stand up pray a prayer in one minute and say Lord my life is about to change as I hear this revelation I humble myself let your word come as light please pray this prayer just one minute because God is about to change lives right now God is about to shift levels please pray oh yes doors will open forever for certain people Lord I pray I pray this revelation has changed my life it has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham possessor of the most high and Paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of Melchizedek and Abraham and he told him he said without contradiction in the realm of the spirit it is only the lesser are you listening to me it's only one who is higher who has the capacity pastor please come who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing follow me in the realm of the spirit listen to me only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you and the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing no man can draw you above his anointing are you listening to me that's why when God wanted to swear, he looked for one who was higher than him. So he could submit to him and say, please help me swear to these people. When he did not find anybody, he said, oh, since I'm the only one, I swear by myself. Are you listening to me? 
powerful principle listen listen i want to give you the unbeatable secret the unbeatable secret of the anointing growing in the anointing and financial prosperity when you want to rise you don't sow to people lower than you they can't lift you when you get to your wealthy place this is called charity are you listening to me you sow upwards and then you are called higher are you following me now without contradiction it is only the lesser that receives from the greater hallelujah i want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing i never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that i can do for many of you you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater when i saw this scripture i repented from talking about men of god and people i want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals hallelujah listen to me in 2004 i wanted the anointing so badly i had been seeing the manifestation of god's spirit in my life and Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize. Hmm. I went, pastor, listen, for six hours, I was standing in that crusade ground. You know what I was doing? I was looking for what to do. There was nothing to be done. Later on, I saw them pushing people who were sick. I said, beautiful. I said, can I join them? They said, I'm not part of the committee. They trained them. I said, committee or no committee. I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget, Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know, his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture. Where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me. If you can see me as I'm taking up. Suddenly I saw that bed. I thought other people were seeing it. But I realized that I was the only one who was seeing it. Do you know by the time I finished the encounter with that manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I turned and I found out that I was already back in the stage. I don't know when I turned to face. People. And from that day an anointing came upon my life. There is no one I pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Many of you have cultivated the attitude 
of dishonoring people. I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy, was it sugar cane or something? And I saw two old women. Many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor. And I saw the old women, just 10 or 15 naira. I paid for them and they said, you know how old women bless. They were speaking and I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize everything you have not seen in your life, you have not known how to receive it. Whatever it is that you have not seen in your life, you have not yet known how to receive it. Because it's available. Are you listening to me? Before Charles and Francis Hunter died, when I heard that they died, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the US. And my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them. Guess what I wanted to go and do? Not to go and preach to them the way many of you want to do. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. I wanted to beg them to allow me to scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have, has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? See, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time, I may not read it. Just write it. Look up, please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me? She acknowledged that truly there was no man like Solomon. And guess the next thing she did? She packaged her gifts and she gave Solomon question. How do you bless a man who is already blessed? Are you listening to me? Because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm. That woman heard of the fame of Solomon and said, "Ah, ah no, no, I need to find out what is going on. And the Bible says she sold and Solomon gave her everything she needed. That's what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? If your brother or your sister is not married, instead of casting out devils and getting angry, go and find a married couple and look at them. They just got married and say, please, um, I bought a small gift to just bless you. And without controversy, you are fulfilling a law in the spirit. Suddenly, you see yourself walking in the anointing. I used to see Benny Hinn. I loved him so much. I See, honor doesn't just mean you package a seed. 
the bible says honor the lord with your tithes many of you have been giving your tithes that's why the heavens are not open there is a way you carry it i'm not talking of being sanctimonious that you realize that i'm sowing to someone who is richer than me i'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me and he will take me that's why the bible says, my god paul speaking shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish god will send a man who is higher than her and say give him food what is god doing the widow of Zarephath. See, the Shunammite woman understood this. The moment she perceived he was a prophet of God, he said, quickly, let us build a place. And without controversy, whatever level you want to get to, there is a career of that anointing working in this earth. The reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class. You go to class together, but you do not know the difference. Hallelujah. You have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today i will be the first person to provide fuel for that car i'm not a fool i know this principle are you listening to me you see why we are rich because we provide free bus transport for you I don't know the kinds of anointings that are here and I know that there are some anointings we do not have so we sow into your anointing by providing boss many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing these are the laws are you listening to me every time I'm around a man of God when I went to Dr. Akbami's church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when I entered, people were there looking at me. Oh, this is the Apostle Joshua. When I went in front of Dr. Akwami, I got down on both of my knees. I don't know him. He's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines. And I greeted him. And then I got up. Because without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? Many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV and you say, Kai, this man's realm herself is so bad. You have not gotten to where he's getting to. You have three members and you are criticizing him. There are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing. I tell you, you can listen to all my tapes. The heaven will remain short. That honor is a law. Are you listening to me? Look at the myriads of Nigerians in Abuja and Lagos queuing for jobs. Their yard mate goes to a, a lucrative office every day. Why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him? You may not understand what you are doing, but you are tapping into a law. I tell you, it will not take two weeks, they will call you. Are you listening to me? Respect this principle I'm teaching you. For your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of Kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing Others were discussing and criticizing. I said, Lord, I know there is grace. And I went there. Smith Wigglesworth laid his hands on Lester Sumro. Are you listening to me? And Kobus was with Lester Sumro for one week. And he laid his hands on me. When I went there, Kobus looked at me. He said, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me three times. Sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news. It's not by age. If you understand the principle, you will rise. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. Hear me. My mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry. And this is why I can never fail. You don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing. Are you listening to me? 
I respect the careers of this anointing. I saw into the lives of blessed people. Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. Some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting the anointing? And all kinds of stories. Hallelujah. Rather than celebrate, when you don't celebrate an anointing, forget about walking in it. I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. It mustn't be a pastor. Hallelujah. You want to raise children. You see a woman that raised eight children. All of them are disciplined. There is an anointing. That woman can, you can tap into it. Hallelujah. I see ministries that represent the things I want. Even in the realms of prosperity. I couldn't understand the prosperity on Oedeko's life. I studied this man and read his books. I couldn't find the key. I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands and the Lord said from today everywhere you go the land will open for you and people keep criticizing we go to CGC it's packed full with people we come here packed full blue roof see when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated it's God that oversees his laws I can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something see before all my brothers entered into a relationship, when they entered into a relationship, I was concerned. Ask them, Valentine's Day, I was so into it. Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate, who may not be as good looking as you look like, every time she's cooking, where are you carrying this food? I'm cooking. I want to sow into an anointing. You are laughing at her. Then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you marry. And you, you see that God, you are not fear. Let me tell you, life will never change until you change it. For those of you who are waiting for things to change, are you listening to me? I'm showing you a law. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Hallelujah. I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We are looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? We find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, Go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope. What they call faith. Sometimes I sit down and I'm watching television and I watch Benny Hinn. I watch Kobus. I watch all of these people and I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department. Because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people Said, Know this, know that. I told the leaders, Manasseh suggested it, and I said, quickly, 
the heads of department and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater i'm showing you a key i promise you it will open any door every time i am in lack i find those who are prosperous quick quick with the remaining money i don't waste my time sitting i don't waste my time no no listen let me tell you something listen to me hi lord in john 21 the bible says peter said I want to show you something your skill can fail you are you listening to me it was a time of recession i was saying lord give me a word for this recession i've had many preachers and god showed me something do you know peter was a fisherman realize that there was a time jesus told him go and fish and take the mouth from the coin that means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity however there are times it can fail what law do you engage in when it fails let me show you the bible says peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish suddenly there was no fish a fisherman who used to fish all the time there was no fish and the bible says when you went jesus saw them listen to what jesus tells them in john 21 he said children how many people is jesus older than among the disciples he said children it was a test of honor children have you caught any fish they said no he said cast your net that's you have passed the test they would have said children Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening when my mother came here that's why quickly before we said anything i did what i called her i said speak to this work without controversy when it was time for her to go back i packaged a dangerous seed and i went and met her i may be your son but this is not the issue of son now I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was before he started his business he was dry cleaning my suit for one year one solid year as a seed he knew what he was doing when you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing they are tapping into graces there are many of you you are your job is to grumble and complain there are many people that I honor and so into their lives is not because they are nice people. I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them. I'm interested in the anointing. When, let me tell you, when I'm watching a man that carries something, I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do it, say, oh, I'm seen. And you are not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night i'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake do you know that if you honor people final year students we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night 
Many of you see the ministers. You just come because they are your colleagues. You just tap them. Ah, edgy alpha. I'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg. But I tell you the truth. You can sit down and tap into anointings. I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty handed. No matter what happens, even if it is 10 naira, I must put it in my pocket. And at the end of it, I will bless him. Are you listening to me? I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working. I repented from castigating people and criticizing people. Any grace that I see, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you have empowered these people. Suddenly, sometimes I listen to the tapes once. Do you know, aside from last week's tape, there is no koinonia message I don't listen to. I can easily say it's my ministry. I download it. I don't ask the media to bring it. I want it to cost me something. I download it. And every time I'm prophesying, or the man of God is prophesying rather, I get down on my knees. God is my witness. I say, Lord, I believe your servant is about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promised myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carried. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water, I'm blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time. But I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life. They may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow the tithe of this ministry every week, each and every week. We are sowing it. Many of you have been giving, but you have only been doing charity, you have not been rising because you look and say, Ah, God tells you, package this seed, go and sow it into Joshua Selman's life. He said, God for God forbid. I'm seeing suits like me, I'll go and sow. And you see somebody stand with a plate outside. And he's begging you. And you go and throw 20 naira. You'll be rewarded because you did charity. But that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way. It's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. These people say, why are they always joking? Call my case. Instead of you to come and be praying and say, Lord, part of my prayer request. There is grace. There is grace to receive. You can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing. Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in Futmina. Go and see the kind, the rip, the miracles and the revival that is happening in Futmina. I, I, I wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories. I tell you, people catching fire. 
but there are some of you who are sitting down here you hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where i wonder where you think your miracle is coming from when paul was going to damascus and he fell the bible says god commanded ananias in other words he recognized he was a carrier of that glory and ananias said brother paul god sent me that i should lay my hands on you that your eyes be open and that you receive the baptism of the holy ghost and paul said yes i've seen it in a vision and he laid hands on him many of you come in every week you see prosperity you see excellence you feel god is calling you into ministry every time you see every man of god you come and talk and look and say ah jakes i saw you that day at the faculty and suddenly the door is closed you will secretly get his tape and listen to and you find out that the door is not opening you can't find that key are you learning something tonight graduates forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie if i were you and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12 right here as soon as you finish go and find somebody that is walking polish his shoe while you are polishing god is calling you into ministry you prepare or god told you you marry a minister go and find a pastor william's wife is coming here every week every week you are seeing her after you finish you say ah give me five you just shake her and the door closes and you shake empty hands and somebody can come and say lord if i may but touch the helm of scarlet that's how many of you keep sitting here people come from other states less than 30 minutes they have caught fire and caught an anointing are you getting blessed i'm not saying you should give me money i'm blessed you know that and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing say kai that means i'm a big man you are not wise you should turn quickly and start finding a way there is he that scattereth and increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty i can't be a failure in life no way not when there is one career of an anointing hallelujah when pastor biodun was going to bring dr miles munro do you know what they did what i mean um um what's his name the per mike mudok do you know what they did one month before he came they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs say after me honor as soon as he was entering his hotel room a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote he announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world no ministry has honored him like this the honorarium that they were supposed to give him they doubled it times three and sold it into his life there are people who have been in abuja since 1991 1991 they don't have their building when he came into abuja he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him many of you are there on campus god called me into ministry you are foolishly doing things there are people who have run this race before you you can't come and greet them you see them you just push them i taught somebody and they fell down it will tire you see now it's not it's not like before that they tell somebody no no you see stay back and let go 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 and do ministry hallelujah while on campus we were all already in ministry i tell you we we're men of god but i served in fcs till i finished i was a prayer secretary engineering students fellowship we we're already in ministry doing great things jakes was the president of naka Ejimi was cutie cutie uh, uh, he was in cutie hallelujah manasseh was in faculty of arts he was prayer secretary bishop became the prayer secretary after me right and then he became the president of engineering students fellowship are you listening to me 
we were ministry but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us from there i became the national prayer secretary of conference of nigerian christian engineering students then we all were serving jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again later became our leaders in fcs and we still told them yes sir we'll go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them but we're still saying yes sir because it was about office not person are you listening to me so why will you be surprised today that he and i will never lack people who are serving are you listening to me it's a law and it's a principle after tonight's meeting we're going to pray two prayer points the first prayer point is you are going to ask god and say lord i have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them from today open my eyes to practice the law of honor i need to begin to work in uncommon results there are careers rise up on your feet somebody's life is changing i tell you somebody's life is changing this is one of the most powerful message you would have had in 2012 and without controversy the lesser i've given you a key tonight i tell you it will unlock any door i don't care what that door is it will unlock every door doors of jobs doors of ministry doors of business doors of power say lord i repent from dishonoring the careers it may be your mother it may be your father it may be somebody by the roadside it may be an elderly woman somewhere an elderly man somewhere it may be your head of department it may be people around look beyond the man see an anointing that can take you to a new level and without controversy the lesser is empowered enriched blessed lifted glorified honored by the greater let this key open a door for you doors of greatness doors of new anointings doors of increase doors of business doors of marriage doors of family doors of jobs hallelujah hallelujah now you are going to pray and you are going to prophesy and say in the name of jesus i honor every career of the anointing that i need in my life you may not meet some of them for the rest of your life but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit it may be your mother it may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband you are looking for a good husband you want a new car you want a new job you want promotion you don't get it by dishonor some vessels are on to honor some vessels are on to dishonor if you can recognize this you are a wise man you are a wise woman we're rounding up come on pray lord i serve with my seed i serve with my time i serve with good report in the name of jesus but take a posture i recognize anointings i respect anointings hallelujah
Hallelujah. Listen to me. When you look at a man, you may not know when you see a man who is anointed, find out the encounters that brought that man to that level. Are you listening to me? Find out what level of grace someone may come up the podium or he may preach on TV. He may not have the utterance you are looking for. Find out what brought him on TV that you have not yet gone. Somebody may come up here and may be preaching in Hausa and you are having to, they are having to interpret and you laugh and say, this guy cannot preach. You are there seated at the back. The person is there in front. There must be something he carried. I tell you, if you don't recognize this, you can, see, let me tell you, oh no, it's not something you say, uh, I did it in my heart. Lie, lie. It's a law. Somebody will do it for you too. So you have to honor. Any man, not just a pastor, whoever carries what you don't carry, respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it. Listen, let me give you a secret. For those of you who are preachers, every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man. The meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. These are laws people don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted. Careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house I have not seen in the lives of many people yet. And I know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it. I'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor. My greatest, my greatest desire is not to be a superstar Joshua Selman standing. I tell you, my greatest desire is that every one of you, there are many anointings that are for the taking. Many of you don't know how to receive. And let me tell you something. The careers of your anointing are not always within your reach. Every day, the price is more. Every day, the price is more. A day will come, it will cost you more than it's costing you right now. I tell you the truth. There are many people, for instance, with all humility. I, when I used to have a lot of time, you remember those times? We we'll sit down, sometimes some of the ministers were around. But right now, we don't have that luxury. Every day, it keeps moving further. If you don't see it, a time will come, Elijah will move. You are looking, you will not see the chariot. Someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle. Hallelujah. Very soon, many generals of God are leaving Zaria. Many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival. In your arrogance and pompousness, you will never look and say there are anointings. What did these people carry that made them shake the campus? What did these people carry in the midst of persecution, in the midst of pain, and say, Lord, would you cause that there be a rain on my life? What keys open the door of prosperity? What keys open the door of influence? Many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside. You are busy castigating and say, hey, crowd does not matter. Instead of you to say, Lord, there is a key. Once upon a time, these people were not there. What brought them? The train is moving. And for those who can see, you can catch something and ride on it. Without controversy, the lesser. I tell you a secret of commanding results. You will command results. God put results on earth to be reproduced. Not to be greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. 
Father. Sing one more time. Ray. Ready to be praised. Ready to be praised. Father, you reign. Reign for you, Lord. You are ready to be praised. Ready to be praised. One more time. Prophesy. Sing, I live, yeah. I need And I have no fear. I want the moral Hey, I live. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. I want the Come on, turn to your neighbor and prophesy. Hey. Praise your name, and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing, I live, I live, praise your name, and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Just the voices, sing, I live, I live, to praise your name. Let the devil hear you prophesy. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, say. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow, tomorrow brings. One more time, just the voices. I live, I live. I It's giving us a reason to rejoice. Yeah, I live, I live, I live, say. I have no fear. I want tomorrow. One more time. I live. Praise your name. To praise your name. I need to praise your name. You're prophesying that this is why you live. I live, say. I need to praise your name. I need to praise Hallelujah. your name. My spirit is fired up this night hallelujah we're going to make some 
dangerous confessions this night that will, rem it will remind the devil that God and us are still in charge. Hallelujah. While I came up, that was the song that was in my spirit. My, I tell you, my spirit is fired this night. Ah. I live to praise that name. <laughs> and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Are you tired of prophesying? I live, yeah. I live to praise that name. <laughs> and I have no fear. I live, I live, I live, I live. For the last time, I live, I live, I live, say. and begin to prophesy he has made me the head I remain the head forever I'm the redeemed of the Lord he has called me blessed I remain blessed forever go ahead and prophesy my path is as a shining light it shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day the hand of the Lord is upon me his favor encompasses me as a shield. A thousand falls by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me with my eyes. Will I watch and see the reward of the wicked? Go ahead and prophesy. My path is as a shining light. Shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that against that day prophesy I'm the head I'm blessed I'm lifted the anointing is upon me in the name of Jesus my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil Gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising he's exalted me above thrones above dominions above principalities and every name that is named both in this age and in the world to come i refuse sickness i cannot be sick i refuse poverty it is far from me god has not given me the spirit of fear but the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind he has given me the tongue of the learned that i will know how to speak a word in due season my words are seasoned with song to minister grace to the hearers. Come on, prophesy. Through wisdom, my life is built. By understanding, it is established. True knowledge is filled with every blessing. I'm above Satan. I'm above the powers of darkness. He has lifted me. He has given me a name that is above every other name. He calls me great. He calls me blessed. He calls me anointed. My gates are continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. My way pleases the Lord and he makes even my enemies to be at peace with me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, prophesy koinonia. The Bible says, hold fast your profession of faith let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so go ahead and prophesy it doesn't matter what is happening in your family god is faithful god is faithful i shall not die i have no covenant with death i choose life I choose life. I do not live by the sword. So I cannot die by the sword. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I run into it and I am saved. Go ahead and prophesy. Wealth and riches are in my house. 
the wisdom of God is at work in me. The works of my hands are blessed. I move from glory to glory to glory to glory. The hand of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon me. The gift of the Lord that is deposited within me makes room for me and it ushers me into the realm of greatness. Pray and prophesy. Let the devil hear you. The Bible says, As I hear you say before my ears, so shall I do. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm lifted. I have the mind of Christ. I don't think failure. I don't think defeat. In the name of Jesus, I'm an ambassador doing wanders for the kingdom. I lay hands on the sick and they are healed. I cast out devils. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to announce the acceptable year of the Lord and the year of vengeance of our God, to give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul and guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the courts of God. Even in all age, I shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. The Gentiles come to my light. Kings to the brightness of my rising. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my body. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my body. It quickens my body. No divination, no enchantment against me can stand. They shall gather, but as surely as they gather, they will scatter. Because the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. How could I? Of what tomorrow brings. Yeah, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. I have no worry. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings hallelujah the best way to predict your future is to create it hallelujah so that you are not confused about what to expect and he told job he said has thou commanded thy morning has thou commanded thy morning he said the heaven even the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but job has thou commanded thy morning 
Have you instructed your future? Hallelujah. I refuse to enter into a coincidental future. No way. No. Hallelujah. You may not be able to do something about your past. But let me tell you something. It is absolutely within your power. God gave you anointing not for showmanship. He gave you the capacity to create. The only thing that can enter your future is the word of God. Nothing else can enter. Hallelujah. You can send the word. The Bible says he sent forth his word. Hallelujah. He sent forth his word. Listen. Every time you speak in faith, believing, I want you to realize that the word of God is creative in nature. Are you listening to me? To create means to make substance out of nothing. The word of God becomes that substance. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among men. Every time the word of God materializes, it becomes something. The word can become anything. The word became flesh. It had substance. Listen, Jesus is the word. But you are the voice that will release that word. John said, I am the voice of one crying. Although I'm not the word, but I'm the one who gives breath. Hallelujah. That's the reason why the first characteristic of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence. Whenever the devil wants to destroy the life of a man, he brings you to a point where you cannot talk again. And at that point, you are hoping and wishing and trusting that things will change. But can I tell you something? It is not within, it's not just left for God to change things. You've got to use your mouth as a weapon of creation. Son of man, he said, can these bones live? He said, only thou knowest. He said, really, it's not within, if you want it to change, prophesy. He said, and I prophesied as, as I was commanded. There was a sound. You're going to prophesy one more time to your life. Many of us have left our future as a barren wilderness. You're just hoping one day that things will change. No. The fierceness of the world necessitates you rising up and beginning to practice the principles of the kingdom. I like the scripture that Bishop read. He said, they go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. As many that appear before him in Zion. Part of the things that happen in Mount Zion is that you go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. For lifting my head. my head, sing one more time. When I pray, thank you for lifting, thank you for lifting, thank you for lifting, thank you for lifting, thank you for lifting my head. Say after me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it like you believe it. I am blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm anointed. The Spirit of God is upon me. I'm a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I know the word. I understand the word. I believe the word. The word is working for me. God cannot lie. I believe his promises. I'm an ambassador. Doing wonders for the kingdom. I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with sickness. I'm the blessed of the Lord. His hand is upon me. I'm the glory of the Lord. I'm the beauty of the Lord. I'm well favored. I'm like a well watered garden. The Gentiles come to my light. The kings to the brightness of my rising. I'm distinguished. I have the oil of gladness. I know what to do. There's no confusion in my life. 
the word of god is a lamp to my feet is a light to my path through wisdom my life is built by understanding it is established through knowledge my life is filled with blessings say one more time through wisdom my life is built i cannot be foolish the wisdom of god is at work i understand the principles of the kingdom say i understand the principles of the kingdom i know what to do i know how to prosper i know how to live in hell i know how to be victorious i know how to live long i know how to command results the hand of god is upon me the word of god is making me wise it's giving me an inheritance i'm not an ordinary christian i'm supernatural the anointing is at work in me i have an unction from the holy one in the name of jesus give god a shout of praise hallelujah he says i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then give you an inheritance listen listen if your life still remains in confusion then you do not understand the principles of the kingdom are you following me now the edge you have over carnal believers or unbelievers is the fact that you are not just walking in a system that you are hoping for things to happen by guesswork this is why we labor in the world day and night to see that you grasp an understanding everybody say understanding the bible says wisdom is the principal thing it says in all thy getting get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it hallelujah one of the greatest blessings of the word of god is that it takes away ignorance the bible says hear me for an heir although he's an heir but as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave though he be lord of all so although it is true that there are certain things that have been written concerning you it takes understanding to walk into that experiential truth this is what we seek to do the word gives you understanding there are a lot of people who just preach for effect there are many people who preach just for swagger but let me tell you something if you are truly anointed you will preach to create understanding for as long as i do not know how to cook jollof rice i, I will keep guessing is that true mix everything when but when somebody who knows what to do the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the word of God is full of the compendium of people that came, they saw, and they conquered. They have left a testament of their exploits. So that we, by diligently following in partnership with the Holy Spirit, will do these things. And Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes in me. In other words, he that believes in all these truths, the works that I do. He said, he shall also do. And greater works. That's what the Bible says. He says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we should show forth that there be a manifestation of the things that we have been predestined to do. I told you this is a training ground. This is not a place where you just come and sleep or you come and laugh. No. This is a place where God gives you understanding. Say after me understanding. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When you have understanding, confusion ends in your life. When you have understanding, the same boisterous river called life, you will walk on it as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. We're going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding. Say it from your heart. Grant me understanding these things that are still a mystery unto me open it up oh god the bible says jesus was going to the city called emmaus with two men and although he was the bread of life they did not understand but when he sat at table he 
broke the bread and their eyes were open say lord open my eyes open my eyes oh god when you know it you have known it forever when you know it it will tell in your life when you know it there's no confusion about it when you know it see he said they are life to those who find them you can pretend to find it but when you truly 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 when you truly know it it will show in your life say lord teach me teach me i'm willing to learn teach me open me up to the things of the spirit open me to the things that command true power the things that equip me to be an ambassador you have told me i'm a sign and a wonder say lord i don't want to keep seeing darkly open me up the bible says keep the light in your eye be darkness how great is that darkness but it is the entrance not the reading not the explanation the entrance of the word that gives light pray I receive understanding I receive understanding that will put me in charge put me in command there is a generation waiting for my manifestation heaven is waiting for me there are lives that are depending on my understanding the things of the kingdom he reigns he reigns he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns Our God is an awesome He reigns, He reigns Sing it with faith in your heart He was standing by her side hallelujah praise the lord god bless you you will be changed tonight in the name of jesus god bless you please be seated greet one another hug one another tell them it's good to see you again bring out your notepads your pen let's get to the business of the night When you seek him early, you will find him. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of a parable of ten virgins. Hallelujah. And then the Bible tells us that five were what? They were all virgins, meaning they were all of the fold of God, same fold. But five were wise. You know, sometimes when I stand here, I just feel I should just open my heart. Look, let me tell you. The things you are learning that some of you take for granted, you will see people pay with their blood to receive it in the future. This is when you will appreciate it. You are not paying for it. Let me tell you something. The Bible says five there was a time all the ten had the opportunity to get extra oil is that true there was a time that they could have gotten as much oil this is the time right now but while five were paying they all had oil they all had oil is that true they were anointed they had knowledge 
But the remaining five said, uh -uh, the fierceness of time will require that we hold extra oil. And while the five held extra oil, the remaining people, the Bible says, although they were virgins, they were foolish. What was their foolishness? Refusal to pay attention. When the, those who sold this oil said, remember the Bible says it is wisdom that stands on the street and cries. While men are passing, wisdom is saying, look, pay attention to me. We need a Sunday school department. Who did CEM? Please. Help that baby. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And then, all of them were gathered. What they did not know, listen, was that the oil was being used and would require refilling. And a time came when the lamp of the other five was dying. And the Bible says there was a sudden announcement. This is exactly how life will present itself. Sudden announcement. Here comes the bridegroom. Everybody, the Bible says the five who were wise, on the strength of their extra work, they now said, now we have enough for this occasion with the bridegroom. And then the remaining five, the remaining five who did not pay attention, the Bible says they, were, they came to beg the other five and say, please, can you give me small oil? They said, no. When it comes to this one, we don't, there are some things they cannot help you do. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are certain parts in life that nobody can help you cross. No matter how they love you, nobody can get born again for you. Is that true? And the remaining five had to run out. I told you this thing. I'm giving you the scriptural basis. That when you don't pay attention to some things, no matter how far you go in life, the, the, the time they were supposed to run and go and buy, they didn't pay attention. Now they were forced to go out. And the Bible says, while they went, what happened? The door was closed. The door was closed. There are some things you are receiving right now. That you will bless God for tomorrow. I just sat this afternoon and I was just praying. I was just praying for everyone. And blessing God for the ability to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. Was that rain? If that's rain, bring the chairs inside. Bring the chairs. Just find anywhere and sit down. Come. Ushers, help them. Add chairs in the front. Add chairs everywhere. Come and sit down in the pulpit. Is the word that you are hearing now that will give you shelter tomorrow. Huh. You have been a shelter in the rain. You have been a doctor when in pain. Lord, you've been a listener when I call Oh Lord You've been my friend You have been A shelter in the rain You have been A doctor when in pain you have been a listener when I call. Oh Lord, you've been my friend. Listen, no matter what you are going through today, it's nothing compared to the whiplash that ignorance and lack of preparation will bring. I don't care what it is so long as you are breathing the bible says a time will come people will look for death and it will run away what kind of suffering will make a man look for death sit down anywhere sit on the floor it's better to sit on the floor don't be ashamed of the camera we are not we are not playing we are not acting film here this is this is life 
Find a place. Sit everywhere. Come and sit around. Occupy some of these seats if you can. Just leave the minister's seats. Sit any other place. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. And I take God seriously. Say one more time in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. They are life to me. Because I found them. Hallelujah. I receive calls almost daily, text messages, hundreds of text messages every day. And The major issue is that many people call and they are asking for help. Families, believers who are born again, pastors, great men and women of God who are trying to find meaning as to why their lives are the way they are. Are you listening to me? Every time we counsel people, we counsel every Mondays. And there are families that come with unanswered questions. Listen. The level of unanswered questions that are falling upon people are becoming too serious. People, look, people are asking questions. Questions about their personal success questions about longevity, questions about health. Science has failed. The government has failed. I was reading the paper about, I mean, um, online now, about um, Egypt and the commotion that is happening. And this country and all the things that are happening. And tears just filled my eyes. I said, Lord, I don't know what you did to me that made me to pay attention to your word. But I pray that the people in Koinonia will pay as much attention. Will pay as much attention. The Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. You see, let me tell you something. The days of begging people for the things of God are over. Are you listening to me? Where you tell people, oh, come will give you sweets, two, two tom tom, one vix, one tom tom for coming. And the people say, really? Will they give it? Or oh, there's cold and then we'll prepare tea for you. And people come, they say, that tea I will take. Those days are over. Because whether or not, see, everybody in hellfire today believes in Jesus. I hope you know. The only mistake is that they believe too late. The Bible teaches us that there is a time. Please project Lamentations 3.28. Lamentations 3.28. I forbid you. I forbid you from failing in life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I forbid you from entering prostitution. As a result of not listening to this message. I forbid our brothers from becoming arm robbers. Arm robbers are not just the ones who jump fence. I forbid you from going to a harbor list. Because you think the word of God is not working. Do you know the number of people that patronize harbor list, Bishop? It's not a hidden thing again. Pastors, prophets, apostles, everybody. Look at graduates running helter-skelter around Nigeria. Did you know that many people who run back to Zaria don't just run back because of desire. They run back because of the pain and the severity of the frustrations. But there is a way. God cannot leave people in the dark. There is a way. Listen, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. You must search it out. You 
you must search it out. Hallelujah. You must search it out. It is good for a man. Man doesn't mean a male figure. just means a human being. It is good for a man that he bear his yoke. When? When? What is it about the youth of a man? The Bible says the glory of men is their strength. Is that true? Bear the burden. Pay the price. That's why I say this every time. You will quote me in the future. No matter how you cry, I don't care how you are looking at me, I will say it. Hate me, I will say it. I will preach it. We will file you. When you become a wonder tomorrow, you will look for us and say thank you. See, when you are in the training ground, there are some things you don't think about. You don't say, ah, my makeup, this powder is 10,000. Uh -uh. Or you say, Kai, this is my suit. Is, uh -uh. When you are in the training ground, you are there for business. It is when you win that you will celebrate. Is that true? Now is the time for training. So when we say pray in tongues, don't just say, ah, this fine guy is still looking. Pray! Open your mouth and pray. If you don't pray, life will whip you and you will still open that mouth. It will be open. The only thing is for what? Either to announce your pain and tragedy to the world that cannot help or to cry before God who is our help. I say, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. See, if you really get this thing, you have gotten it forever. Are you hearing me? I want one lady who can cook. You know, don't you know it's not pride. God has blessed you. You know you whether you're a caterer or something. Stand up, just one. Who is that? No, no, I'm not going to say you cook. It's an illustration. So, let's call the ones we are sure of. Opi, stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. Look at this, listen. If we ask you to make cake now, can you make it with absolute confidence? Ask me the same question. Ask me. No. I may try. It may work. I don't know. That's how many people's lives are. You tell them, how can you lead a man from point A to B? They say, well, I know. See, there is a level of persuasion I want you to get. Not just believe, persuasion. See how she just smiled about the cake thing. But if they ask you to, there are some of us, you've made it once, twice. Hallelujah. It wasn't bad, but you are not sure. Is that true? When I saw this guy snapping, and Oga John, I knew they knew what they were doing. Ask me to snap. All I know is to look at you and press that thing. Doesn't matter how it comes out. But these guys know something about perspective and angles and the rest. This is what I'm teaching you. Don't just enter the world blindly and hoping that things will change. There is a fierce world out there. Are you listening to me? You're not going to live in health by mistake. Please get this. Are you listening to me? Living in health is not a mistake. You're not going to be prosperous by mistake. One day you wake up and say, wow. So I made it. Mm -mm. It will never be by mistake. You're not going to know God by mistake. You won't have a glorious life and a ministry by mistake. You will not raise children after the fear of God by mistake. This thing of mistake or nemesis or if God wants it, he will do it. Stop that kind of language. It's not a good language. Say, if God really wants to bless me, after all, I didn't ask him for Jesus to die. So why wouldn't he, wouldn't he freely give me all things? See, if you don't pay attention, you will be surprised. Is that true? Now, Hope, let me ask you. Was there a time you could make cake but not very well? What did you do? Did you train yourself? You went for catering school. Mrs. Kait, Abi. Now, listen. You went, you, she followed those who, with faith and patience, leaving some around, going to PZ every time because she was determined. Is that true? Now, she can bake cake for wedding. Somebody will give her 50,000 overnight. Is that true? And somebody will say, I hope that 
the same, uh, our birthday is the same. No, it's not the issue of birthday. This is why people get angry at the success of their colleagues. Because they think life respects age. Ask Elihu. They say, ah, when did the uh, promise become successful like this? When the same koinonia, the same, in the same class, taught by the same teacher, somebody will get 100, somebody will get zero. Is that true? God bless you, please sit down. If you pay attention, if you pay attention and you give it seriousness, I promise you, it's a guarantee. I promise you. You know what? I said this thing right from when we used to meet at the back of chapel. That we will be so successful and the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. So that it will not be guesswork. You will know what you did. You know, when you ask a pretty lady, you say, I, I see how fine you're looking. What is response? You say, it's God. Bro. Yes, it's God. But let me explain to you. It's God. God gave grace. You took advantage of that grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. It's God that gives children. It's the woman that carries the gift. Correct? So that tomorrow, when you are blessed, it will not be a mistake. And the purpose of the blessing is to make others a blessing. That's why your blessing can never be by mistake. God will teach you the steps and you can guide somebody. Tomorrow, some of you, you are looking at me now. Some of you will be the ones on air. Presidents of nations will come to see the hand of God upon your life. And when they ask you, you will be talking to other people. When you see somebody sagging his jeans and laughing, say, look, for your own good, you better wash this childishness and sit down in one place. It's not the issue, oh, I can do both. It's the matter of the heart. Sit down and allow God to build you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, we've been considering the su subject of success. I tell you, my spirit is fired up. Proverbs 18. We began two weeks ago by talking about the spiritual dimension of success. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Played the documentary and we thought, I told you that success is spiritual. Everything, life in itself is spiritual. Don't let secular humanists deceive and confuse you. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Then we considered the place of wisdom. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by studies. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by accumulation of experiences. Job said, this wisdom is not found in the land, in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk, still building on success. What do you have in your house? Proverbs 18. I want to share a powerful secret and I trust God that will pray. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 16. Let's read together. You can look up. One to read. And bring it him before great men. One more time. Now, where a man is, put your name. Ready to read? One, two. Don't say my gift. My is not your name. This is English. One, two. Go again. Mean it from your heart now. One, two. Go. Father, bless your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, give us understanding. Let the fruits of this teaching speak. Let it abide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gift of a man can do what? The word make there is create. It can create space for him in life. And usher him. Can we get it from NIV? Or New Living Translation? Anyone? Ah, is, that's, that's, not, is that, that's not the version. That's a different. 
1816. A gift does what? Is is not saying a gift like a bribe. No. Just forget. It's not like a bribe. We are not talking of Nigeria here. Are you following me now? Because many of you, that's what you think I'm talking about. No. I'm not saying a gift like a seed. Huh? No. A gift. The gift of a man. It says what, my dear? It opens the way for who? Not the giver's friend. Not the giver's brother. It opens a way for what? And does what? And ushers him into the presence of it says the gift of a man whether there is space or not the gift can push people and create space for him and usher him into the place of the great a man's gift can make room have you ever heard people say no space have you heard that language sorry no space if there was space would have helped you the bible says a man's gift has the ability to push people and make space. Not only that, when other people are segregating, it can usher him to the place of the great. Hallelujah. It can usher him to the place of the great. Write it quickly. What is a gift? God giving abilities. God giving abilities. Your potentials. God giving abilities. That's simply what a gift is. Your God giving ability. The Bible says if you take it seriously, it can create space for you in life. This night we're not just talking of gift, we're also talking of skill. What's your skill? Your learned abilities, acquired abilities. The difference between a gift and a skill is that one is God-given. It can only be developed. The other one can be learned. It can be acquired. Both of them have the capacity to bring you before great people. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of an interesting person called Joseph. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he had Joseph, by the way, please... Joseph was not a dreamer, for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not a... There was nothing spectacular about the dreams of Joseph. As far as we know in the Bible, he had only two dreams. How many times have you, had a, have, have you dreamt? Are you a dreamer? So Joseph was not... His gift was not dreaming. His gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Are you following me now? So the Bible says that... Because of that ability, his brothers envied him. Many things happened. And then the Bible, I'm just rushing now. The Bible says when he was put, remember when, when um, Potiphar's wife and all her story, 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 let's just jump it. He found himself in the prison. Is that true? And the Bible says when he found himself in the prison, there was the wine presser and the baker. But he realized that he had something. Is that true? Are you following me now? When it was time for God to bless him, God made the king to dream and close the heavens over the sorcerers and the magicians. Are you listening to me? They got up in the morning and tried to do their enchantment as usual. No way. Because it was time for God to bring a man into success. But God realized that a gift can open a way what way? The way of the prison. Nothing else would have opened that way for Joseph because they were not planning to bring him out. Is that true? There are many people today who do not realize that if they take advantage of the gift of God that is in them, it has the ability to take them from where they are into realms that they never dreamt possible. And tonight, this is our prayer. We've been examining the principles of success. There is a dimension of success that only your gift can bring to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your gift. This dependency attitude of Nigerians is what has stopped them from exploring their gift. 
Ale Baka Musamu. Have you heard that statement? What is it in English? May God give you so that we will get. It's, it's a wrong concept of dependence. That's how many of us are waiting. Say, oh boy, just get work. Once you are there, just remember me. Your boy is there. Oh. See, let me tell you. If that is your mindset, you are going to suffer in this Nigeria. And in case you think you will run abroad, you will still suffer. There are still people, there are people under the bridge of every nation. True or false? Every nation in the world has, has bridge and there are people that sleep there. It's just that films don't carry it. There is ghetto everywhere. True or false? So, many of us have this escapism mind. You are just trying to get lottery and say, oh God, let this green American lottery just happen. They would go and see how many Nigerians live like, like outcasts abroad. Because they believe. I've told you. There is nowhere called greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. The Bible says he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Many people want to run to delta or rivers. Say ah oh yeah we are coming to chop our share of the national cake. Go and find out how many poor people were born and bred in that same land. Are you listening to me? Everybody say, I have a gift. Say it, I have a gift. It can make room for me. It can take me from where I am to where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Somebody is catching this thing and leaving some realms forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Catching this and leaving some realms forever. Hallelujah. Who would have known that comedians will be paid millions in Nigeria today? Look up, please, everybody. How many of you used to play football and you come back home and they've kept the cane to flog you? As soon as you are entering, there's a way you greet your father. He says, hey, you already know that this night. But today, that same football, are you listening to me? That same football, as blessed people. Comedians, for heaven's sake, they won't come until you give them 2.5 million or 5 million to come and talk. They just crack a joke. Hallelujah. There are artists today, artists today, those who draw caricature for banks, they are paid millions of naira millions of naira listen if you get what i'm teaching you this night something will happen in your life some of you it will happen instantly A young man called gray farah many of you know him gray farah at age 10 was wondering what to do with his life and he found out that he liked stones and he decided to start painting stones so that people will use it to just you know, just press their books and their doorposts. And people started looking at him and laughing. Every time people saw it, they just laughed. And they said, well, let's just help this small boy. Little did they know that that was a champion in the making. A time came, he started packaging those stones very well. At age 12, Grefara became a millionaire. At age 14, he was seated in the board of directors of 14 companies. Age 14. How old are you? Are you listening to me? I want you to know that if you take advantage of the gift, the gift of God is his seed in you that is supposed to help you enter the realm where you have influence and honor to legislate on behalf of heaven. Are you listening to me? Jeremiah Gyang, I've told you, Jeremiah Gyang used to be in Joss. That guy they call Jeremiah Gyang. Now, um, whether they are serving Satan or God is not the issue now. Are you listening to me? The issue is that the gifts were developed. You, you, get, you get the point? The guy you call M.I. I've said it. Jesse Jacks. Who were Sunday school mates. Why all of us were looking at ladies. Hey, pastor's daughter. These, those guys were building their potentials. 
Just like some of you were doing. You will go to church. You won't sit down. You will use your offering money, buy ice cream, be playing ball at the back of the church. That's what you were doing. Whereas others were hearing the word and going. See the difference right now. Are you listening to me? That these things have been perverted does not negate the fact that if they are gifts, they will still bring men to honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 2 Kings 4. The story of an interesting woman. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So the, the person was the son of a prophet. Look at me. I want to tell you something. Maybe I'm going to create another controversy now this night. Listen. That your man of God or your spiritual father or mentor is anointed does not automatically guarantee that you will enter success. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says this guy was the son of who? That means he does not respect anointing. Hmm. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest what thy servant, that thy servant fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slaves. And Elisha said to her, listen now. This woman was in a situation where she needed a miracle. Two of her children were going to go as slaves. Hallelujah. What did Elisha tell her? He said, what shall I do for you? And he asked a question. He said, tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What do you have where? In your house. And the Bible says, there is this treasure in this house, these earthen vessels. He said, what do you have? The woman had been running helter-skelter, running helter-skelter, and she met the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Could it be that many of you who have been running helter-skelter or many families need to calm down and look at what you have in your house? I've learned by experience and by the word that the blessing of a man is always not far from him. It's just that there is no discernment to recognize it. Are you listening to me? Yes, the blessing of a man is always not far from him. Sometimes it's ridiculously close. You may not even know. There were many people who walked with Jesus, yet they were looking for miracles and until Jesus went to heaven, they were not blessed. Because they did not realize. Your miracle can be so close, you may not know. The Bible says, And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house except what? A pot of oil. You see how she didn't place value on it? The Bible says she said, Thy handmaid had what? Nothing. Nothing. That means this thing is not of worth, but just for the sake of answering you, let it be there. Thy handmaid had nothing. There are many of you that God has given you certain things and you have been calling it nothing. 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 The gift of a man. Whether it's a spiritual gift, is whatever kind of gift the Bible says the gift of a man can single handedly pick you where you are, take you out, and exalt you. It can, it can, I tell you, it can. Hallelujah! The man called Reinhard Bonke, he said he was considered by everybody to be a dollar, what people call a dollar, complete dollar, dollar IQ low, everything low. But one day he discovered that there was the gift of God in his life. And today, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world celebrate this man. Called Reinhard Bonke. His name is synonymous to soul winning. Because he discovered the gift. And it created space for him among the great. It ushered him. When you are mentioning great people in history, you will mention him. Men who have done great things for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? In history, there's a woman called Mother Teresa. Didn't have the ability to heal the sick and do all of this, but she discovered that she had a gift in her. She refined it to a point that she gave it and gave her life and forever history will remember her. Are you hearing me? the gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. 
Ah, your parents plan for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The congestion is always below. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can pay the price to rise to the top, you will sit there and be wondering. 90% of the world's wealth is controlled by less than 10% of the world's population. And they left the remaining 10%. They spread it across and flung some in Africa and everybody is running like rats. Whereas somebody can arise. A man called Wole Soinka got up and looked and said, look, the boundaries of Africa will not stop me. He knew that he had something. See, I want you to be persuaded. Persuaded. It always does not look like it can make you great until you see the way men celebrate it. Matthew Ashimolo hawk bread in this area. Some of our parents bought bread from him. While they were eating it, he was prophesying, Lord, the world will hear me. You say, I bring bread, 20 naira you take. Yet, this guy was moving. Within a short period of time, now he has commanded what we call apostolic territorial legislation. That's what he's doing in London. But acres and hectares of land that they would never give to a black person and is legislating on behalf of heaven. A man called Sonia Delaja, till date he does not speak fluently. He got up and went to a communist country, Ukraine, and stayed there. Let a part of those who led, right now he's among the fourth most influential people in that state. 80% of the people in his church are whites. He has led a revival and broken some barriers. Say after me, my gift. Say it, my gift will make room for me. Let me share with you a little story. They know about it. Years ago, I went to a particular bank in this country to go and beg for loan. I just entered promising, I believed God, spoke in tongues, fasted, prayed, I got up. You know, there's a way they can look. You see, let me tell you, people have, be careful, I'm warning you now in advance, be careful the way you, you turn people down. Because let me tell you, it does not show. The Bible says, now it does not yet appear. Went to squat in my friend's house in Abuja. I got up, went to the bank, met them. Told them I was begging for loan. These people dribbled me, dribbled me, made a fool out of me, embarrassed me in the bank. I, didn't, I said, what is all this thing? And I laughed. I said, one day, they will call me. Are you hearing that? One day. What's the name of this guy that ran for second uh, vice president? Tunde Bakari. A bank came and met him and said, Sir, we are begging you to collect a loan of $10 million. We want to give you. No capital. The name of the capital is human capital. Do you know what human capital is? You and your reputation is what will be a, a collateral. So banks are looking for Dangote and looking for this and then some of you run there and they say, get out of this place. We are looking for people who have used their gifts. Tell yourself, no man will mock your God in your lifetime. This is what has happened to some of you. You see your father stand, no rent. And the landlord will stand and blast all of you. Blast you, say, look at you. Pretty for nothing. Eh? You are all these kind of Nigerian people. Just laugh. And say you will invite him when you are cutting the scissors of the duplex you are building for your parents. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man makes room for him. I'm speaking to some of you. Some of you think, don't just think I'm motivating you. I'm speaking to your spirit. 
I told myself I will never go anywhere where anybody will look and I'll have to chicken out and hide myself. I have something. I have something. I have something. When you find it, it so happens that God carved your own like your fingerprints. God is not a fool. He will not put competition around. He gave you your uniqueness. What is your uniqueness? When you know your uniqueness and you are persuaded about it, you found your secret of glory in life. Did I do something here? I think I've done something. Did, was it me? Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have seen people in this life that years ago, they would look at me. They wouldn't, some of them, <laughs> let me tell you something. Ah, life. Somebody who will be driving you today, tomorrow will be the one who it will be the honor. I've gone to homes that I went years ago. Years ago. They were looking at me like some of these are serious people. But now, when they hear you are coming, it's as if God is coming. Say, say after me, the gift of a man. Yes. The gift of a man makes room for him. Makes room. The brothers of Joseph did not realize his gift. They didn't know it would be an honor one day for them to see their own brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time they went and suddenly they found out that their brother was now the prime minister in Egypt. Could it be that some of you who are sitting down today, somebody who has looked at you and said, Tolu, one day the person will say, Tolu, please talk to XYZ for us. May God make you a wonder. May God stop you from being small. What is that gift? What is that gift? For some of you is wisdom. When you think of Benihin, you think of the healing anointing. When you think of Ora Roberts, you think of healing. When you think of JJ Okocha, you think of football. Mark Zuckerberg, you think of IT. What is your uniqueness? Define what makes you different. That's what the world will pay for. What makes you different? The greatness is not in your similarity. The greatness is in your difference. When you master your difference, you will exchange it for honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The world is full of people. What is your difference from others? Do you know it? Do you even believe it? There are many musicians in this country equally anointed. But when you call Sinach, there is a there is a, a carving. She has carved a brand for herself. When you mention Frank Edwards, they, they not only discovered their gifts, they discovered what was unique about that gift. That's what makes you priceless. When you discover that gift, you will know that you are not one of the many people roaming around the earth. Oh, there is something about your life. You may be in the same class. You may be in the same office. But let me tell you, you are not the same. You are not the same. You may be doing ministry. Everybody is doing prophetic ministry. Everybody is doing apostolic ministry. Everybody is doing evangelical ministry. What is it about yours? What is it about yours? Every great man in life not only discovered his or her gift, but the uniqueness about that gift. What is your uniqueness? What makes you stand out from the rest? I'm asking you, and God is asking you. What makes you stand out from the remaining people? Listen, when you find your gifts, the next step is to begin to refine it. This is the hardest part. Because your gift at its default state is not good enough to make you marketable. Did you hear what I'm saying? Refine yourself. Build yourself. A lot of us don't do this. Christians are very, very, very lazy people. You know what made us lazy? The fact that there is something called the favor of God. There is something called the wealth of the wicked that will be transferred to the righteous. And people just say, my wealth, come, find your way into my pocket. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. 
people have been confessing that thing from the day you were born and they thought it just works like that till today it has not come when the bible says the wealth of the wicked people just people just just craft that thing and pick out what they want the wealth of the wicked will come into the bible says god give it to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and he said to the unbeliever, he give it to heap and to travail so that he will bring it. It is your wisdom. Hallelujah. What is your gift? What is your uniqueness? What makes you stand out? What makes you stand out? Among all of the graduates in Nigeria, what do you think will make you get a job? What do you think will make you become a CEO? What do you think will make you become an uncommon? I preached a message. Extra, what did I, what, extraordinary anointing. What makes you extraordinary? Hallelujah. What makes you extraordinary? It's not your place of birth. It's not even whether you are from a royal family or not. What makes you different from other people? If I write a book today, what is the difference between my book and that of David Ibiome or that of Bishop Oyedeko or that of Paul Enenche? What is the difference? Many of you like doing the same things. That's why you are not moving anywhere. This is how a lot of people. We like, we think it will work because you are doing copy and paste. There is beauty in being unique. Are you listening? There are even, even among bad people, there are some armed robbers that are notable because they were unique. Their degree and strategy of armed robbery was so touching. They said, no, I won't steal like the rest. This thing is common. There is a strategy. This follow, follow attitude is good to follow people, but you must follow with wisdom. Many of you, every time God is telling you move left and you see a crowd moving right, you think you are wrong. A whole nation can be wrong. That a thing is popular does not mean it is right. The path of greatness is a lonely path. Few people follow it. That's why you will not find many people. You will think you are making a mistake. Wait until you arrive there. Everybody will turn and say, ah, I need pastors in that journey. Hallelujah. What is your gift? Do you realize that if you take that gift, some of us is plotting, just plotting. Do you know that if the Lord anoints it and wisdom comes upon that gift, you will be able to establish something that will make you so influential you can legislate for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? A lot of people say, Billy Graham, all the presidents go to greet him. But what people do not know is that it was part of his life's goal. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. His, he really didn't believe his gift was just normal evangelism. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. He sent them hundreds of telegrams again and again. They kept bouncing him. He didn't stop. What you see or what you have seen is the reward of many years. There are some of you, God has spoken a lot of things. God has told you. Some of you will own banks. Some of you will own corporations. Hallelujah. You started selling recharge card, nothing happened. People just say, and you know believers have this ugly way. Once you start something, nobody buys it. They say, oh God, leave this thing. If God is in it, speed will come, favor will come. It is lack of the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. You can never know success until you know failure. In the school of greatness, your greatest asset is your failure. Are you listening to me? Are you following me? I'm teaching you something very powerful. My gift can make room for me. My gift can make room for me. Worship team. Wrote to me is rehearsing all the time. Hallelujah. He's been with us for years. We've, we've gone, every, I know how much he has his money because he believes. This is, a, this is a master student. I think he should have rounded up his masters. 
but he just believes that there is something upon this and he's taking it all the way tomorrow presidents will call him and he will just be playing and they will sign checks of millions and you'll be wondering and saying ah, ah, just keyboard you you play your own as you are playing they just they point they will even talk to you they'll just say this way go out those who do decoration do you know there are those who do decoration for presidential figures there's this guy called yam yal yam press jordan what's his name i i heard that he was in zaria here is that true now he got up with his publishing and today he has become a multi-millionaire Yet, there were others who started before him. This afternoon, we went to pray for um, one of our ladies' father in Shikan. While we were passing somewhere, we saw this. I mean, we are talking about people who were pushing, who used to push wheelbarrow. Jakes was saying, ah, this wheelbarrow business used to sell before. And we are talking. And then Wale pointed one man's shop and said, this man, it was by pushing that wheelbarrow. Right now, he has one of the largest shops. Say, I will not let men despise my gift. Say it. Many of you have stopped developing your gift because you have been lied to. Some of you can cook and all you can cook is Amala. And you, you have a dream of having somewhere just Amala people laugh as a you self. Abba! You want to disgrace the world. See, greatness lies in the bosom of those who can go the extra mile with their gifts. Refuse to let men talk you down. It's better to take a step and fail honorably. They will clap for you. The one who tried and failed is better than the one who didn't try and is just making noise. Oh, pass the ball to number five. Ah, you would have just passed that in now. If you are taking that penalty this way, look at simple penalty. See you, see goalkeeper. Talk is cheap. Somebody is sweating in the field for 90 minutes. Somebody else is talking. Say if it was me, that thing, the way he did it like you, that it would have been a goal now. That's how many people in life are. How can a graduate not get a job? How can blah, 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 and they're not doing anything? You're in 200 level, your lecturer told you, ah, you're a nice student. See, I cannot understand why graduates are not getting jobs. Then you finish and carry your CV to the same man that commended you. <laughs> and he says, get out of my office. You're like, ah, ah. Say after me, my gift will make room for me. Say, my gift will make me great. Say one more time, my gift will make me great. Yes. Some of you are architects. You are good, but not very good. And God is telling you, refine that gift. One day you will get, let me tell you something. Once you can provide solution, nobody cares about your age or what you can do or who. Are you hearing me? The gift of a man defies race and age and anything. Once you see people discriminating you, your gift is not notable enough. When your gift is notable enough, you will break every kind of barrier. Hallelujah. What do you have in your house? And the woman said nothing. Probably somebody said, me, I can just make people laugh. That's my own. Everybody calls me a dollar. Zero in math, zero in English, P in social, uh, you know, just anything, literature. But you can speak small. At least make people laugh. Why don't you say, Lord, if you can use this. This is what Reinhard Bonke said. He said, Lord, if you can use this, then use me. Do you know your beauty too is a gift? Hello? There are cynical guys that anytime they see a pretty lady, they are just angry. Why? I don't know. Say, look, don't think because you are beautiful in this place. Beauty is nothing. It's a lie. Beauty is something. Beauty is a gift. The book of Esther, there was no pastor, no prophet, nothing, just a beautiful woman. She was the ambassador of God. Many of you feel guilty for being fine as if you gave back to yourself. It has happened. It has happened. Cherish it. Build it. And use it for the glory of God. Don't use it to go to men in TJ Palace. Tell yourself this beauty. Could it be that God will make you marry the minister of finance? So that when you are there as Esther, when they want to cut corners, you say, uh-uh. 
Do you believe this? I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be blessed. Don't let anybody fool you that money will take you to hell. It's not true. Money only amplifies what you are. If you are a thief, money will make you a bigger thief. If you are, if you are immoral, money will give you more options. You can now rent a bigger hotel. If you love God and have a desire to advance his kingdom, money will make you do that better. You will build roads. You will build schools. When I went to Shika, I was sharing with them. I said, one of my dreams in life is to have a very big hospital. This is why you need to be successful. Say, I will be successful. Don't feel guilty about it. Say it. Say, I'll be rich. I'll be blessed for the kingdom. give God your beauty. Yes, I have nothing but everybody keeps telling me I'm a pretty person. Why don't you bring it and say, Lord, you can use this. Anoint it. Let this beauty make room for me and take me to a place where I'm in a position of influence to legislate for the kingdom. Some of you are very intelligent. People are sweating, reading overnight. You wake up that morning, one hour to the exam and browse and get A. You think it's ordinary. Is an ability of God. Why don't you stretch it through and say, I will get to a position where I will do great things. When they make me a vice chancellor because of my academic prowess, I will now legislate on behalf of heaven. When they bring the names of people who don't qualify, we kick them out and say, no. This person may be poor, but he deserves a chance. Give him a chance. Are you listening to me? Some of you will put scholarships for less privilege. Some of you will name it after your accomplishments. You will be so great, they will name a foundation after you. Joshua Selman Foundation. No, no, look. It will happen. The beauty of success is that it depends on you and God. It will happen. It will happen. You know how many women have named their children Joshua? Look at how long Matthew's surname is Ashimolowo. The whole world is calling it. They have never complained that it's too long. When you become great, when you become great in life, when you become great in life, I watched a DVD of Apostle Johnson Suleiman. He went for a crusade. When he came down, I saw how the God, they interviewed him in CNN for 12 minutes. Nobody will say you are a Nigerian or you are an African. No. Listen. Are you going to remain where you are? Are you not seeing your family members crying? Is it not obvious that they need a savior? How many of you have seen your father come under pressure? No rent. No nothing. What are you doing about it? I told myself I'll come to a point in my life where I'll put all my family members on perpetual salary for their lifetime till they go to be with Jesus Christ. Brothers, how will you like that kind of thing? If wishes were horses, beggars would beg to ride, but wishes are not horses. But you can turn that wish into a horse. By applying these principles I'm teaching you. And you will ride on it gloriously. What do you have in your house? This is what God is asking you. What do you have? What do you have in your house? Don't sit down and be admiring great people and say, Hey, lucky for them. Oh, you people have gone. Don't pray for us. Say, I'm going to do something. Say it. If you know your uniqueness, how many books are you reading? How many books? How many books are you reading? Readers are leaders. How many books are you reading in the area of your call? If you are snapping this camera, if you cannot mention five people in this country that are good or around, I know you are not serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You, is that God is calling me into a healing ministry. Show me whose DVDs you have. Who God has called into that healing ministry. Where you are, you are reading how they started. 
when you go to my house, you don't find, okay, there's, there, there are two movies now. They did, the Lord of the Ring is still there. Then this Tyler Perry's film, I can't remember again. I can't even remember the name. But there are people that have modeled what I see God making me become. And I sit down. I study. I want to empower God's people. I want to make them ambassadors. Set them on fire. Do you have a unique grace? Do you have a unique gift? Are you doing anything about it? Some of you just sit down and keep pitying yourself and disturbing those who are moving towards their destiny. Try this life self. Now, wow. If we were abroad by 80 years, they would have given us this. If you, listen, I'm not laughing this night. If you don't stop that attitude, you will find that you are 50 years and you are still talking like that. Uh, you know there are some people who believe it's just nemesis. That's just how life is for us. Nothing used to work in our family. My sister too is like that. No job, no marriage. Me, ma'am, like that. No job, no marriage. As if you do not know that you can change it. You go to a place of employment, they kick you out, laugh, and say one day we will drink tea with the CEO of this company. We went to Shik and one, one, one man just stopped us. One guard man that is trying, where well, he was doing his job. The guy stopped us and said, we are not going anywhere. We were trying to plead him, saying we are not going anywhere. And Shade's husband is like the ogre of the whole you know, the security company that employs the people. So I called Shadia. I said, Todd, they've stopped us. So wanted to go and pray for her father. And she was just happy. She just got one bigger guy. The guy just marched and came. When they came, at once they allowed us and we waved the man and we left. <laughs> Be careful what you call impossible. Because somebody will come and make it possible. Would have, there were some people who were waiting there. But when Chade's husband came, he saluted him and we're happy. We're partakers of the glory. <laughs> it taught me a lesson. It taught me a powerful lesson. Impossible is a relative statement. They can close the door for others and say, sorry, it cannot be opened. Sorry, it cannot be opened. You will be amazed to see how they will open it for somebody. I told you there are some people that bank on Saturdays and Sundays too. Is that true? It's only for the masses that bank ends 3 p.m. on Friday. They say, oh yeah, go out, let's lock this bank. But there are people on Sunday, because of one man, they'll open the bank and say, your excellency, sir, please. Come in. We went to Starcoms and I saw one account officer sitting there. Why will a bank give an account officer to come and sit? In a, in a, in a telecommunications company. Some of you, you will have in your own house. You say, so how much are we sending for this school now? Send 10 million for this school, 10 million for this one, 50 million for this. I hear that there is a church building. Send 15 million for it. God punish the devil. Let me talk like Dr. <laughs> Let me talk like Dr. Abel Damina. He likes it. God punish the devil. See, I will be great in life. I'm inspiring you tonight. This was the decision I made years ago. Let me tell you the truth. This decision will cost you something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you willing to pay the price? The woman said, nothing except a little cruise of oil. What did the prophet tell her? He said, go and borrow. You, you are not permitted to borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. What are vessels? Books, DVDs, experiences. Sit down under the feet of mentors and great people that have gone ahead and listened. I've told you, this attitude of saying we are all equal. We are equal in Christ. But when it comes to the school of greatness, wisdom is ability to recognize difference. There are people I will never, no matter how crazy I am, I will never, if I ever get to a meeting and they are seated there, I must salute and recognize them before speaking. Wisdom, Mike Modok says, is the ability to recognize difference. Many of you don't know difference at all. Hallelujah. Doctors don't go about looking for sick patients. They establish an institution and say, if you are sick, find your way here. Is that true? If you really want to be treated, what will you do? You have to go to the hospital. Is that true? Many of us want the doctors to come and find us and treat us. 
Sorry, life does not work like that. Get up and begin to do something about your life. Make up your mind. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. How can a young man be sleeping by 10, 11, 12? You yawn by 12 when others are already writing their names in time. And you, you wonder why things will not work for you. Let me tell you, God is a merciful God, but he's a just God. I know the number of times I sleep in a day. I'm always building myself. Nobody will deceive me. Compared to where I'm going, this is just a step out of the cave. Are you listening to me? This is rehearsals. I tell people, ministry has not started yet. When we get to that level of kingdom influence, where we will not talk too much, at that time I won't be shouting like this again. It's when you don't have results, you shout too much. Charles and Francis Hunter say one miracle is worth a thousand words. If Michael Jackson only said, Jesus is Lord. That statement with that level of influence will bring more harvest than what we'll be doing every week in Zaria here for one year. Is that true? Everybody say influence. This is what your gift. Let me tell you very quickly before we pray. What your gifts can do for you. Number one. Your gifts and your skills when refined and developed will create opportunities. Everybody say opportunities. Your gift, your skill. When refined, when developed, my friend, a military man, took me to a place in Abuja. When I entered that place, is a is a spa place, a beauty place. They took me there to bar me. Ah! When I entered that place, I knew that there was difference between clipper and clipper, barbing saloon and barbing saloon, barbers and barbers. The way they treated me when I sat down and they barbed me. In my mind, I was saying, is this me? Hallelujah. When they finished, they put a lotion. I don't know what it is. My head just foamed like Father Christmas. And they told me, enter this room. I entered. I was enjoying. I don't care what it is. I don't need to know. I will employ somebody who knows when I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And when they washed my head and I finished, they appreciated me. Ah! I said, what kind of place is this? And they showed me the owner, a Lebanese woman who was also walking quietly. Nobody even knew. When we finished everything, time came for bill. It said 600 naira. For barbin. That's what you will pay when you meet someone who has refined his gifts. The same food, a cup of coffee in Transcorp Hilton is 2005. Everybody say cup of coffee. How much is coffee? Nescafe, this type they shake there. How much? 15 naira. If you price 20 naira. Yet it's the same thing you pay. This decoration you are seeing. There are people who can decorate over 2 million, some even 5 million. You will name your price by your refining of your gifts. Write it, your gift and your skill will create opportunities. If Rotimi continues this a day, see, how the opportunity will come is none of your business. Just know it will come. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of how a child. So also you do not know the way of God. How it will happen is none of your business. Hallelujah. One of my uncles called me. My father's friend. Years ago when they come to our house. We are the ones who run to go and wash the car. How are you? We go and wash. I said no problem. I will wash it. He called me of recent and said, ah, ah, I've been hearing a lot. We are seeing the things you are doing. I said, bless God. Oh. He said, when will you come now? We need to discuss. There's something we need to sit down man to man. I said, that's right. <laughs> when, when your father starts talking to you like that, it's a sign that you are making progress. When your father says, there are some things I want to discuss with you, but I, 
when ev let everybody sleep come out clap for yourself you are trying that's that's a sign when your father says look there are some secrets we don't tell people who are the people when your gift starts showing there are doors that will start opening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you, you think you are too young to enter some doors. No, sir. No, ma. If you, if you refine yourself, I promise you that door will open. There are places I've entered today by the grace of God. I know there is no human way under the sun, under the sun that I will enter that place. Hallelujah, I have a gift. Laugh at me, the gift is in me. It will never go out. God gave it to me. The way God did it, God put the gift. The only way to enjoy the gift is to carry me along with the gift. You can't carry the gift and leave me. There are people today, if the gift of God was not in my life, they will see me and just his and pass. But God orchestrated it. You must need me because you need that gift. Oh, I celebrate his name. That's why I rejoice. Such as I have. Go and borrow vessels. This is what the prophet said. Sister, borrow vessels. Read the books. You may, if you borrow vessels, the gift will expand. The oil was there. The problem was there was no vessel. Esther was beautiful. But her beauty was not yet sufficient to take her to the king's palace. Is that true? She was beautiful. Many of you are sitting on gifts today that you are paying for. During my birthday, the things that people brought for me, it was as if it was wedding. You know how they finish wedding and you pack the gifts. I just sat down. I said, years ago, I did my birthday alone. Ah, somebody is after two weeks. You say, ah, is it not your birthday? Your birthday 25th, is it not? Am I wrong? Say you are right. So you say, oh, happy birthday. But there is something that can happen. One year before your birthday, somebody is preparing because of your gift. Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God telling tonight that if you can pay attention, we are discussing on the subject of success. Some of you have been sitting on treasure. You are in the middle of an ocean begging for water. You are in the middle of an ocean. You are an artist. You are watching on TV drawings that are not half your capacity. They are rewarding the people whereas you are there. When I watch preachers on TV preach, I tell you with all humility, I just get up and I rejoice. I say, God, you tried for me. We're on our way coming. And I get up, I rejoice. I say, Lord, I may not know everything, but at least I know something. I know something that I can preach anywhere and not be ashamed. Come on now. Some of you, the business acumen that you have, even the CEOs of banks and cooperatives do not have. Listen, that you have not entered that place does not mean you don't have it. Who would have known that Zuckerberg's gift was so good like this? It takes time to prove it. But that does not mean it's not there. Some of our worshippers, some of these people you are seeing, the gifts that they have, you will see them tomorrow and say, I know this person. I know that person. Abel Damina was born in Samina Kahir. Right here in this area. Who cares where I was born now? Who cares where I was raised? Even if it was with firewood we used to prepare and cook. It's, it's, it, look, when you are blessed, you are blessed. When you know it, you have known it. If it opens the door, it will open the door forever. It will open the door this week and close it next week. Say, I have a solution for the world. Say it, I have a solution. Some of you are music groups. Some of you are individuals. Who has talked you down? I'm speaking to somebody this night. Who has talked you down? Somebody ate your food and said, God forbid. If your restaurant is the only one, I will just, let me, I will learn how to cook by myself. Allow the person. Who has talked you down? I want you to know tonight that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of creativity. Bel Bezalel. That spirit came upon him and he was given the mission of crafting. I'm speaking to you. Who has talked you down, my brother? 
who has talked you down. See, many of you see us today and you think we were born this way. Wait till you hear some stories. When you see great people, you think they had opportunities to just climb. Let me tell you, it's not true. You don't want to know the things they have survived. Greatness lies in the bosom of those who have survived what others cannot survive. I don't care what you think you are going through. I, I slept on speakers and amplifier. It will never happen again forever. There were days we did not eat. There were days we trekked distances. But we did not allow what happened to us. I, there was a day I trekked from the roundabout where Chiki Republic. I passed Chiki Republic. I was hungry. I could not do anything about it. I trekked from there to aviation. What have you gone through that you think is stopping you? Some of you is complex. Just inferiority complex. Every time you want to rise, the devil keeps telling you, you know you did this, you know you are this, you know you are that. We are here tonight to call that devil a liar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are calling that devil a liar. There are some of you that the gift God has given you is a supernatural prophetic grace. Some of you is an apostolic ability. Every time in your dreams you see the whole world. Some of you are book writers that will write on common books. The gift of a man. He said, borrow vessels. When she borrowed the vessels, she entered. He said, lock your door. There are some trainings you don't do in the open. You must close your door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you that like open, there are some times you need to close your door. Because what God will do in you is only him that can do alone. You will close your door. And she began to pour it. Do you know how, how many vessels? The pain it took for her to carry the vessels. While she was carrying the vessels, she said, I'm on, I'm on my way out. Never, never to be in this situation again. You are the solution to the prayer of your families. Some of you, many of them never experienced some things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But could it be that God brought you tonight to speak to you? There are some of you who have been saying, oh, the government is not giving job, this and that. Could it be that God is trying to speak to you? I'm challenging you. Take what I'm saying seriously because we are going to pray. We will soon rise up to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want you to pray your life out. I told myself I am great. I'm great. I'm great. Joshua Selman, you are great. I speak it to myself every day. The world will hear you. You are a sign and a wonder. The anointing that is upon you is not common. Don't trivialize it. Give God thanks but celebrate it. If it's common, go and get it in the market. Hallelujah. The gift that God has given you, Oga John, there are photographers around, but it's not common. Believe it and take it seriously. There are some of you that have all kinds of gifts. You are administrators, uncommon administrators. As young as you are, you can sit down and administrate. You didn't read these at me. Could that gift take you? There are some of you who can write proposals. There are many of you who can do a lot of things. I'm speaking to you tonight. Wake up. Call your name and say, wake up. One to go. See, prophesy it from the spirit. One more time. One to go. Yes. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. That means you have been sleeping. Awake thou that sleepest. And Christ will give you life. Somebody called me and said, Josh, at, at this level of your life, what are you doing? I said, preparing for an extraordinary life. This is what I'm doing right now. This is what I do every day. When people get up and run, everybody is going for work, everybody is doing, I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. Oh, and when the master is done with me, he will present me as a masterpiece, a symbol of his wisdom and artistry. I speak to you. You will hear this message many years after now. When you stand and watch the world clap for you, and tears stream down your face. You will tell them, this award is given to me in London, but I was trained in Zaria. And I did not despise the chastening of the Lord. 
Many of you, this teaching is hard on you. It's a wake-up call, but despise not the days of chastening. I bring you a word. Let the devil not lie to you. You are great. You are on your way to happen. I don't care how many times you have failed in life. When you become successful, when a woman has a miscarriage 50 times and she gives birth the 51st time, nobody will ask her how many times you had miscarriage. We don't care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am somebody. I am somebody. I am somebody. I had that song years ago. We went to sing in a church. And while they were singing it, they were laughing. That song entered my spirit till today. Tell yourself I am somebody. It's time to stop this false humility and start believing in what God, this is what koinonia is all about. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with him to shake the world. I would never, if, if I tell myself I am not great, I'm lying. It's not humility, it's foolishness. Say, I am great. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say the world will testify that I am great. Say the world will testify that I am great. Say I will walk at it. I may cry but I will walk at it. It will cost me but I will walk at it. Understanding. You are paying the price. Some of you will be mighty women of God. As you are looking at me, you, you, God has already shown you. It does, you, are, you are wondering, how shall these things be like Mary? He said, thou art favored, thou, how did he even put it, that salutation? Hail Mary, mother of grace. He said, thou art favored among other women. She said, what meaneth these salutations? How shall these things be? Don't, you don't need to ask how it shall be. Let me tell you, whether you are a mother here, whether you are a father, whether you are a sister, a brother, young or old, at any level, if you can allow God to take a hold, I have found my servant David. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. What has God given you? I'm speaking to you. What has God given you? Oh, God has given you leadership. Take it to the extreme. Let that gift make room for you. God has given you grace for ministry. Take it to the extreme. God has given you business acumen. Stand up and establish those conglomerates. Don't let no devil talk nonsense to you. Let the employment of Nigeria not threaten you. Tell yourself I will arise. I will create jobs. Thousands of jobs. You can be a lady and God is telling you. You are entering into the finance world. Don't sit down and let people call you a weaker vessel. It's time to begin to silence those demonic voices. You've never held 10,000 of your money, so what? Your gift will bring for you something your entire family did not hold. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Everybody close your eyes just in one minute before we pray. Close your eyes where you are. And just begin to meditate in one minute. I'd like you to begin to see yourself the champion that God has made you. I'd like you to begin to see yourself solving the problems of mankind. You are an ambassador. See yourself shaking away the limitation of your culture. See yourself shaking away that limitation. Who told you you cannot get there? I'm speaking to your spirit. Just close your eyes and meditate. I have found my servant David. I have a gift. I have an ability given by God. I have an ability. Men may not understand it now. Men may not understand it now. It's still in the process of refining. It's still in the process of refining. But when God is done with you, my sister, I tell you, although you cannot speak good English now, I am telling you, when that gift is done, you will stand near scholars and it will be an honor for them to stand with you. Yes, I know you came from the village. Yes, I know you came from the village. You've not afforded a good meal. But who told you that gift cannot take you? I'm speaking to you. 
Yes, you have not gotten admission. You wrote jam 20 times. But who told you that gift cannot rise up? I'm speaking to you. Yes, your wire didn't work well. Yes, you started that business and failed. But who told you that anointing is not in you? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't care what has happened. Yes, it is. Who told you that that anointing, the first day you prayed for a sick person, the person was not healed. In fact, he died. But God told you you have been called to take his healing power to the nations. Do you believe it? There are many of you that are, are TV hosts. God is taking you to do mighty things. Some of you are beauticians. Some of you are mighty men and women. Joshua the high priest stood before God and Satan was there to accuse him. And he says, Satan, is this not a reed that I've taken out of fire? The Lord rebuke you. At any level you can start. Hear me tonight. I'm speaking to you. At any level you can start. Joseph, in one night, he slept as an ordinary slave. He woke up the next day and his gift made room for him. Somebody's gift will make room for him. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Now in the next five to ten minutes, please, if you want to scatter yourself around, I want you to pray. Let me tell you, if I, if I say prayer and I see some of you looking at me, I'll come and hold your hands and pray with you here. Please, if you are sleeping, wake up. We are finished. Wake up. It's time to pray. Inside and outside. There's no space for you inside. Go outside to pray. I want us to pray. The Bible says, This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecy. Many of some of you don't know these giftings. You are going to pray and say, Lord, what did you put in me? What did you put in me? I'm tired of inferiority and complex. I'm tired of being thought out of as a second class person. What did you put in me for your glory? That's prayer point number one. Lift your voice right now and begin to pray. Come on now, Koinonia. You won't pray like this. You won't pray like this. Lord, what is that treasure? What do I have in my house? Young and old, pray, 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 pray. Sekete prekete ke pekete ke topo kosopata. Rekete broske pai. Maka prakata. Lekoto broske bariata. A prokoto pekete pekete bananaba. Make sure you are praying. Lord, what is that gift? What is the rod of God in my hand? I'm tired of trying to look like everybody. I'm tired of trying to talk like everybody. Koinonia, pray. Lord, show me my uniqueness. Show me. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. My father did not see it. My mother did not see it. Show me, oh God. There is a generation waiting for a revelation of the glory of God that is in me. Pray. Pray. You came here tonight to pray. What do you have in your house? What do you have? Where is that ability? 
that can make you stand anywhere that will also give you a seat among the great koinonia pray i don't like the way some of you are praying come on pray Contend in the spirit. Every power of darkness that wants you not to discover that gift in you, the Lord rebuke it. Pray. It will come out. It will come out. It will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Forget about where you are now. Forget about where you are today. Forget about what you don't have. Forget about what has happened. Pray. Pray. Invest into your tomorrow. Invest into your tomorrow. What is it, O oh God? I call unto you. He said, Call unto me. I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. He will show you in a dream. He will show you in a vision. He will show you through prophetic confirmation. He will show you through your passion. He will show you through your desires. Show me, O God, show me, O God, the gift that will end poverty in my lineage. Show me that gift that will end poverty. Show me that gift that will bring my family to greatness. Show me that gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You're going to speak and say, Lord, I received a baptism of diligence to refine and develop my gifts. Are you hearing me? Some of us hear me. Some of us, you need to reduce your time of pointless visitations going to go and meet friends and gossiping and discussing about things that have no bearing to your future are you hearing me you're going to see whether it is in the rain in the sun you're going to tell yourself i may cry i may weep i may not look fine now as i'm doing it but i'm ready hear me some of you by this prayer you will need to cut away from godless and unserious friends well, hold on I'm speaking to some of you because for some of you it is your friends and your company that are keeping you from being great your, this friend thing love is a command association is not there's nobody that says you must have many friends to show you are making progress in life they may gossip about you they may misunderstand you don't worry when you become great it will settle the matter are you hearing me you are going to pray now and say, Lord, diligence. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before kings. Lift your voice and pray. Diligence to fast. Diligence to pray. Diligence to study. Day and night. Diligence to read books. Diligence to listen to tapes. Diligence to go for workshops. I receive a baptism. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. Are you praying, Koinonia? Are you praying? 
Pray. Say I break free from ungodly movies, ungodly associations, ungodly places for the sake of my destiny. I pay the price. I pay the price. I saw the seed. I may weep, but I saw the seed. I can't be a failure in life. Shekete koto prekete bolo suba. Rekete proskete keleba. Ambre kotoshka rakata leko sopa. Yes. You are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to prosperity. You are praying your way to generational blessings. You are praying your way to extraordinary impact. My sister, pray, 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 pray. Forget about your failures and pray. Forget about your failures and pray. Say, Lord, I will start again. I used to set goals before, but now I'm backslidden. I used to watch videos every day. I used to listen to DVDs, but now I'm backslidden. But tonight, tonight, a baptism, fresh grace. I won't give up. I won't give up. Come on now. Arise. Let your dreams arise. Refuse to give up. God is faithful. Refuse to give up. Go back again. Do it again. Shake it. You are laboring in the spirit. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Last prayer point for this night. Listen. Hear me. The last prayer point. You are going to pray. We just have about two more minutes left. You are going to pray. And send dangerous prophecies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to prophesy and tell yourself that top is for me. No devil will stop me. That top is a position God has prophesied over my life from his word. Lift your voice and pray. I'm meant for the top. Meant for the top. Meant for the top. In business, the top. In leadership, the top. In music, the top, prophesy to yourself. An extraordinary academician, an extraordinary worshiper, extraordinary musician, extraordinary media giant, extraordinary business mogul, extraordinary apostle, extraordinary prophet, extraordinary evangelist. Nigeria, open up. Open up. My gift is bringing me. Abuja, open up. Lagos, open up. Port Harcourt, open up. Kano, open up. Joss, open up. London, open up. Israel, open up. China, open up. My gift is making room. Prophesy. My gift is making room. Labor market, open up. Nigerian labor market, open up. Your gift. Your gift. Gospel music industry, open up. Generals are coming. Generals are coming. 
doors of ministry open up. Miracle workers are coming. Fiery apostles are coming. Fiery prophets are coming. Nigeria, open up. Ladies of excellence are coming. Women of virtues are coming. The borders are coming. Nigeria, open up. Our ladies are coming. They are coming with the spirit of Elijah. They are coming. Entrepreneurs, business giants, business giants, billionaire philanthropists, healing ministers, miracle workers, reformers. Pray. Pray. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Nothing will stop me. Pain will not stop me. Persecution will not stop me. Criticism will not stop me. Discouragement will not stop me. Failure will not stop me. I'm on my way. There is a prophecy. There is a prophecy. I war a good warfare. One more minute, prophesy. My gift is making room. It's making room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koinonia, hear me. Your gift is making room for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lift your hands. I want to prophesy to your life. I want you to receive it with all your heart. I prophesy that these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. These hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. These hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever. I declare that for those of you who do not know what that gift and that uniqueness is this night this night kepotaka pariataka this night may the angel of the lord visit you in dreams in visions receive dreams receive visions receive dreams receive visions let your eyes be open hallelujah I pray for those of you who are suffering from any kind of discouragement or laziness, mental laziness, spiritual laziness, physical laziness, and you don't have grace to develop your gifts this night, I pray that a fresh fire, a fresh baptism will fire you for diligence. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire for diligence. Grace to read books. Grace to stay awake in the night. Grace to study principles. Hear me. Hear me. Those of you who have been talked down to. Those of you who they've told you. You have failed in one way or the other. Or all kinds of things have made you feel inferior. You are afraid to try. I pray for you now this night. In the name that is above all names. Receive grace to take steps. Take action. Over that business, take action. Over that job, submit the CV. Apply again. Apply again. Write the jam again. Apply again. Hallelujah. I pray for some of you who you are the only ones that are visionary in your family and it's bringing a lot of persecution. People don't know what you are. They don't even know that it's for their own good. Every time they castigate you, I pray right now in the name that is above all names, that devil that wants to orchestrate an event to discourage you right now this night lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted all ye ancient doors 
I command that devil to be silenced in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For some of you, your barriers are you don't know the books to read. You don't know the DVDs to buy. You don't know who to meet. I pray. That spirit of God that gives direction. The Bible says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk in it. I prophesy this night. Receive direction for your destiny. May the Lord take you to the right books. The right people. The right anointings. The right counsel, the right DVDs, the right tapes, the right MP3s. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands finally. Anyone here under any yoke of death that says you will not live to be at the top. Lift your hands so you see the way death is killing people like chickens. I want to pray for you. You have no covenant with death. I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. There are families. The moment you rise up, death just comes to take people. I pray right now. The Bible says, in six things shall he deliver you. Yea, in seven things. He said, in the time of famine, you will laugh. I want to rebuke the hand of death. That death that kills people. Look at the way lecturers are dying. Look at the way people are just dying like chickens. A man will be standing, a cow will come and carry him. In the name that is above all names. I declare the blood of Jesus upon you exempts you for death. It exempts you from death. The blood is upon you. You shall not die. You shall not die. You shall not die. Shall not die. I speak to the earth. I forbid it from receiving your body. Oh earth share ye the word of the lord by this apostolic grace i command the earth to reject your body you will not be a victim of accident in the name of jesus the spirit that destroys men in accidents you are exempted from it in the name of jesus you will not be a victim of boko haram or any act of terrorism you will not be a victim of any activity of thieves and armed robbers. Ladies, you will not be a victim of rape or gang violence. Lift your hands and give God thanks. I tell you, your spirit is fired up this night. What do you have in your house? Hallelujah. Now very quickly, if you're here and you've never given your heart to the Lord, hallelujah, we're still praying. You're here and you've never made a decision for Jesus. Perhaps this is your first time of coming this night and you've been hearing my voice. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. We're a family and we do not condemn anyone. Or some of you have given your heart to the Lord, but honestly, you know that you found yourself derailing from the things of God. But tonight you have heard the word of God that you have a glorious destiny. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Reynard Bonke said the door is narrow, but it's always open. Always open. Are you hearing me? Right now I'm going to make an altar call. Don't wait for somebody else to come. When I make that altar call as the spirit of God speaks to you, please come out here very quickly. So that we'll pray for you. Lead you to Jesus Christ and you'll begin a journey. If you are not born again, it doesn't matter how many times you have prayed. It's all a waste. Jesus is the door that will lead you into this experience. Right now, wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now. You're giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Or you're rededicating your life. Please don't sit back. Don't sit back. Don't sit back. Don't sit back. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. She's not the only one. God is still speaking to people. Leave your seat and come. Thank you, my brother. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Jesus is calling you today into a real experience. Enough of playing church. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is where it all starts. Keep coming. The Bible says, if all our hope is just in this life, 
we are of all men God most miserable God bless you keep coming if there are still more people who are waiting for you I believe that the Lord is talking to somebody I believe that the Lord is talking to somebody inside and outside make sure you don't sit back no matter how far you are keep coming keep coming don't let your friends stop you keep coming hallelujah hallelujah the lord jesus brought you here this night to start afresh again some of you you are giving your heart to the lord truly and seriously for the first time others you have you have given your heart to the lord but you are ready to make a commitment and a rededication there's nothing to be ashamed of i want you to lift your right hand as you pray this prayer the lord jesus christ is in this place say lord jesus I love you with all my heart I thank you for dying for my sins today I have heard your word I give up everything and I declare that you are my Savior and you are my Lord sin is no longer part of my life I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me grant me the grace to live the victorious christian life from today i'm a child of god transformed changed i'm not going back to yesterday in the name of jesus christ amen bless you let me pray for you father thank you you brought these ones by yourself they are making true commitments for you and lord i thank you because they were not ashamed let this be the beginning of their best days in the name of jesus christ let this decision not be emotional lord i thank you because these are genuine decisions that will last holy spirit we trust your power to keep and transform and we thank you because truly this will be the beginning of great moments in the name of jesus i salute you for making these great decisions please follow the ushers they will have your details this way You'll meet with Pastor Jakes tomorrow. Some of you don't come for the meetings. Please, um, ushers or protocol, let them know the date for the follow-up. God bless you. I appreciate them very quickly. Soon we'll be out of here. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, I know that there are some families that have come here. Uh, we discussed, we'll minister to you. But you're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of coming for koinonia this glorious prophetic meeting i'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly we want to bless you and pray for you you are welcome quickly 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 bless you bless you bless you bless everyone the lord brought you here by his spirit thank you mommies thank you thank you for coming no matter how far you are come we have a blessing and a prophecy for you Keep coming don't stop if you brought anybody and the person is not coming out push the person push the person till he moves out say come out in jesus name hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia hallelujah praise the lord I believe that the Lord has done something remarkable in your life today. You will go back and see dramatic changes. Hallelujah. We want to pray for you. We have a prophecy and a blessing. And I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. As we pray for you, the things we are speaking over your life for will happen. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we prophesy. We bless you in the name of Jesus. You are marked for greatness. We bless you. We bless you. We prophesy blessings upon your life. The Lord will give you what money can buy and what money cannot buy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pa kotos koto breka teke nekata.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 